Hey, everybody. Here we go now. How's everyone doing? Lee Lowell here, smartoptionseller.com. Today's Saturday, June 25th, 2022. Getting into this last week of June already. This, this year seems to be flying by. This month is flying by. Everyone's out for the summer. School's out. Got that Alice Cooper song. School's out for the summer. Enjoying this nice weather. Wish this market would be a little bit better, but that's what we're here to do. Welcome to our Saturday Synopsis. We look at the charts. I'm here doing these free YouTube videos showing you what I've been seeing on the charts. Been trading for 30 years and I like to give you some information on, on how I assess my trades when it's time to get in, when it's time to get out. I'm a technical analyst. That means I'm a chart reader. That's what I use to help me figure out uh, my trades. So let's jump right in as we do every Saturday and look at the charts. We always start with the SPY, which is the exchange traded fund for the S&P 500. Trades just like a stock, very liquid, lots of volume. So it's a good indicator. It gives us a good idea of how the overall market is performing. Uh, what you see in front of you is the actual charts that I use. I mostly use a daily chart to give me a broader, longer term view of what the market has been doing. This is about two years on the screen here. I use uh, bar charts, a daily uh, open high low close bars I don't use candlesticks all that much because that's just never really what I was taught and what I learned I have three main indicators I have three moving averages so I use a 20 day a 50 day and a 200 day simple moving average uh, those are up here and down here I use the RSI which is an overbought, oversold indicator, just to give you a, an idea of when a market's getting a little overheated or a little oversold. Uh, it doesn't always pinpoint the actual turning point of, of the market move, but it just gives you a, a little bit of a warning sign that things are either overbought or oversold. And on the RSI, it's a 14-day. You can see over here, 14-day. And you get these two horizontal lines that, that you can move up and down depending on your view. The default is the 70 and 30 levels uh, I move those out to the 80 and 20 levels just to give me more of an idea if something's even more overbought or more oversold uh, you know so you can tweak it any way you want so let's take a look at the market and see what's been going on um, I was not here this past weekend didn't make a video so where we were last the that pro two weeks ago was we were coming off this nasty move right so here was last Friday, wasn't here last Saturday. So the weekend before that, we were up around here somewhere. I had drawn this bull flag pattern. Typically, this is a bullish pattern right here. You got the long flagpole and the pennant. Typically, the market would move outside of this congestion pattern, this triangle pattern, to the upside, considering that it was coming from the downside congesting typically it would move to the upside in this case we got the last two weeks have been pretty bad uh we had these big move down you know the fed came out with their their interest rate decision they raised by 75 basis points um and you know inflation came out the numbers came out inflation wise a little bit worse than expected so we had this nasty move down uh, about two weeks ago, we had these two gaps right here. Here's a gap here and a gap here. A gap is when uh, a stock or a market or an index opens up a lot further away from where it closed the day before. So you can see here's where the market closed on this day, and then it opened all the way down here. So you have this gap here, and then it did it again, another gap here. And the market just kept going down. So this was last Friday, um, I, uh, June 17th ended on the lows of the of the last you know five months or so this is a pretty big move this is a pretty scary move a lot of people th this is this has gone on for a decent amount of time it's causing a lot of angst a lot of anxiousness people are selling out of positions it's just a scary time considering that you know the market's just really just been going up 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 so people aren't used to this especially newer traders I get emails from some younger traders and you know younger to me at least that are just starting out trading and basically all they've known they started trading at the in the pandemic like early in 2020 either they were out of a job and they just decided to start trading and then the market just kept going up so they weren't 
ready or they don't know how to prepare or or understand what happens when the market just goes down for a period of time. And even for long-term investors, this is not something that you want to see because it can affect your long-term portfolio, me included. I have stocks that I hold for the long-term, positions that I hold for the long-term, and this has not been fun. Um, so we, we, what we try to do is gauge where the market's going. And so we had these gap moves right here, and then we hit the low last Friday. Um, what markets like to do is like they try, they like to try to fill the gaps. And by that, I mean, the market needs to reverse to close up the holes that are left from before. And obviously the holes are going to get closed more into the future. So you can see, this is where we traded yesterday, Friday, June 24th, right here. This, we had a nice big up day yesterday. And so it filled the, this first gap. So the space that was left here was covered by this trading yesterday, June 24th. The, the gap was here and it completely closed the gap right here. So the next thing that the market is probably gunning for is to try to close this gap up here, meaning the market has to rally all the way up to at least th this low point, And that would close this hole here. So the, the consensus is the market wants to go up. I'm, I, I, I would like to see that as well, but what's lurking here is this, this blue 20 day moving average right here. Let me open this up a little bit here so you can see it better. Um, so the market could continue to go up next week. It has the momentum here. So actually we got a little gap that's left here from Thursday's trading into Friday's trading. So you can see this little hole here. So the market could certainly come back down and fill this gap. So we've got a lot of, we've got a lot of volatility going on here, right? Markets come down big. Every, everybody gets really scared. And then we hit this, this, this point here where the market just turned on a dime. I mean, Sometimes the market is erratic. Sometimes you can't figure out what, why a market moves the way it does at certain points in time. We had this big move down here. Then all of a sudden it bounces right here. There is no rhyme or reason sometimes. You know, it just depends on where the market thinks that there's some value. And this was last Friday, closed kind of near the lows. And then uh, we had the long weekend uh, we were off this past Monday, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we kind of traded in this range right here, these three days. And then Friday, yesterday, we had a big move up, big move up. You know, there's probably lots of profit taking. You know, the sellers were in control here, and they were just taking profits. So there's a lot of things that could explain why a market will bounce or drop at certain points in time. Anyway, so we may have some more momentum coming in uh, on Monday, but we have this downtrending or down sloping 20 day moving averages blue line right here lurking above so the market may move up a little and then tag this thing and hit some resistance right here and it could drop again it's just it's hard to, it's hard to say at this point because there's still a lot of a lot of news items out there that's causing the market to stay down we have inflation that's really bad interest rates are going up covid's still out there we got the war in ukraine these are the headlines that have been that have been pulling the market down for the last few months. And they're still out there. But there's a point where the market comes up where there's value. There's value in stocks. Stocks get a lot, of a lot cheaper, really good stocks. So there's a value point where you'll find people start buying this thing back up. So um, where are we now? Well, we're still in this downtrend and we're having these, this could be just what's called a relief rally where the market's just been sold so much that a rally has to happen at some point. And this is what we get. We get these snapback rallies and then we hit some resistance and then we start to sell off again. And there's a, there's going to be a point where a sell off doesn't happen again, where the market's just content that it's come down far enough. It's time to move all the way back up. And that'll take some time, of course, because a lot of damage has been done on the downside. I'm not completely convinced that the selling is over yet. I'd like to see how it reacts if it comes and touches this down sloping 20 day moving average. If it gets past that, then the next goal is to close this gap and then hit along the down sloping 50 day moving average, which is up here. So the market could get through the 20 day, 
close this gap and move up to the 50 day, which could see some resistance and knock it back down. So those are possible scenarios. There's no way to know what the actual moves are going to be. Now, if we can get through the 50 day, then it's going to start gunning for this 200 day moving average up here. And that'd be a nice move all the way back up to about, you know, depending how long it takes into the 430 level somewhere in this area here. So up, 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 down, up to here. But it all depends how it reacts to the 20 day, the 50 day. Um, those are the first things that it has to get through, close up these other gaps. And we'll see. I mean, maybe the bears don't want to give up control yet and they knock it back down. So there's a lot of things to consider here. Um, you know, there's there's no right answer. No one has a crystal ball, so it's hard to make a prediction. All we can do is make guesses on where we think the market or how the market's going to react to certain spots, certain support and resistance levels. And we use these moving averages to help us. The 20 day, 50 day and 200 day moving averages are widely followed. So a lot of people are looking for the same kind of responses. And then if it could push through, then it gets momentum from the other players and it keeps pushing it in that direction. So for me, I'm hoping the market goes up. I want the market to go up. I have long bullish positions. So we'd like to see it go up. Um, the NASDAQ we look at by the triple Qs. And, and, uh, and the NASDAQ and the, and the S&P 500 were, are now or were considered to be in um, a bear market, which is a 20% move from a recent high all the way down to a recent low. So the NASDAQ's got hit pretty hard. Um, harder than the Dow and harder than the S&P 500. So here's the NASDAQ, same pattern. You know, we had the nice relief bounce this past week. Um, came up to, now the NASDAQ moved a little bit better. It's come up to resistance right on this 20-day moving average. You can see basically it closed just above it on yesterday, Friday, June 24th. So this is the, the NASDAQ, came upon the 20-day moving average, close this gap here, gunning to close this gap up here. So it's gonna to have to move up. The SPY hasn't hit the 20 day moving average yet. So that's its next goal. We can look at the Dow Jones represented by the, the DIA, the diamonds. Um, everything looks the same. Two gaps, one here, one here, and the, the V-shaped bounce here. Uh, hasn't hit the, the 20 day moving average yet. So it looks similar to the SPY. So this is the Dow and the Qs usually lead the way. The triple Qs has now hit the 20 day moving average. So the next spot is the down sloping 50 day moving average. And it could, would be able to close the second gap here. So, you know, for next week, I'm probably looking for, we see a little um, um, follow through momentum to the upside. And for at least the NASDAQ, the 50 day moving average is the next landing spot and for the s p 500 and the dow it's the they have to get through their 20 days the 20 day moving average first and then the 50 day is lurking above all right so let's see some momentum come through next week and see how they react once they connect with the moving average let's look at some individual stocks as we typically do we look at the popular stocks <clears throat> because that's what most people like to, to look at. And that's what they like to trade. So we look at Apple. Here's Apple. And, and uh, the charts of the individual stocks will look s somewhat similar to the indexes. Now, Apple, you can see a gap here, gap here. So it had filled this gap, and it's almost filled this secondary gap right here. Um, we had drawn this line here, this support area, which is right around $140 a share came down below it and now has popped back above it you can see yesterday here's friday june 24th this one day's worth of trading right here so it came back above the 140 re resistance and it has moved above the 20-day moving average which is the blue line here you can see on the right side of the bar it's this little teeny dash mark that tells you where the stock closed for the day so it closed above resistance and it closed above the 20-day moving average 
So it seems to be the 140 level is that area for Apple that seems to be a magnet. And what we really want is for it to now, the 140 level becomes support. Once it dropped through it, then it became resistance. Now it's moved through it again. Now it becomes support. It's just a, a way of looking at um, a price level that seems to have been a magnet in the past. Okay, so let's hope the 140 level holds for Apple and it starts to shoot up. It's got the 50 day moving average right here as the next line in the sand, just below $150 a share. So if we can get some momentum and follow through next week, you know, $150 would be a nice uh, next spot for Apple to shoot for. Let's look at Tesla. We've been talking for a long time. This $700 level has been a real magnet for Tesla. It drops below it, drops above it, drops below it, drops above it. So 700 seems to be that area where in the recent past, the bulls and bears just can't seem to get away from. You know, as we, you can see, we drew backwards. 700 seemed to be that level. And it's really having a hard time of figuring out you know, where it wants to go. You can kind of see this maybe as a double bottom. A double bottom is a pattern where, you know, a market will, or stock will come down, it'll pop up, and it'll come back down to that same little area. So let's draw this here and just use this for the upcoming videos that we make and see if the double bottom holds. A double bottom is more of a bullish pattern comes down once, comes down twice, and bounces and continues on its way. Sometimes it can make a triple bottom. So we'll see. We'll see if the market gets momentum, then right here, the 50-day moving average, uh, around $791 a share, is the next landing spot for Tesla. But it's been hovering around the 700 level, so we want to see you know, where it will go. Um, what else? Let's look at Microsoft. Sometimes we look at Microsoft, sometimes we don't. This is textbook right here. Came down, you had the two gaps, gap here, gap here, and then the bounce. Went through the 20 day and finished yesterday right on this 50 day moving average. These moving averages act like magnets. It's just, it's just how it works. So you can see, stretch it out a little. I mean, it closed right on the 50 day moving average. But Microsoft, just like the, the indexes, have uh, been coming down for the last, you know, five-ish months or so. And it's hard. It's hard to be in that situation. Now, we can, we can redraw these channels. Channels help you to see which way the market's moving, which way the price action is going. You can see here we had this channel that we drew. A channel is just a, a range where a market has been trending in. And since... December, January, you, you can see that it's been in sort of a range, okay? Um, you know, it's not an exact science. It's just a, a visual to help you see where a stock or index has been trading within. Okay, you, you kind of connect some of the tops, you connect some of the bottoms, and it gives you this channel. So it's sort of right in the middle of the channel. Uh, it could move all the way up to here and then possibly bounce back down until it breaks out convincingly in one way or the other, then it should continue on in that direction. My hope of course, is that it goes up, passes through the downtrending line and continues on its merry way. All right. Uh, we look at AMD. It's a favorite of mine. <clears throat> uh, obviously, like Microsoft has been in this downtrending channel, we have drawn some of these lines to show where areas of support are. Uh, $85 was one area of support, and then down here in the low 70s is the next level line in the sand here. It's kind of finding its way around the 85 level right here, and it closed yesterday uh, around $87, had a pretty good day on Friday, June 24th. So AMD trying to find its footing here, right? You know, around the 85 level. 
I'd like to see it go up because I'm long AMD and we have bullish positions in our newsletters. We have, we sold some puts, we sold put spreads. Those are bullish positions. So we want the market to go back up and even going sideways is okay as an option seller. Option selling, you just want the option price to decay. And if a market goes sideways, that's just as good as the, as the stock going up. When you sell puts or you sell put option spreads, you want the market to either sit still or go up. So this has not been bad for us. I'd like to see it go up, but moving sideways is just as good. All right, so that's AMD. Let's look at some of these bigger stocks or some of these more name brand stocks. We look at Walmart too. Walmart just taking a deep dive, deep dive. I bought some down near the bottoms because it, typically Walmart does not make such a dramatic move like that. You can see how oversold it got on the RSI. This is a big move. This is a big oversold move for a stock a company like Walmart. So I nibbled some here in the bottom, nibbled a little bit more here around the 120 level. I'm a long-term holder of Walmart, biggest physical retailer on the planet. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with Walmart in the long run. So that's why I'm nibbling on the bottom. That's me. I think in the long run, Walmart's going to go up and that's what I do. Uh, Disney, same thing. So you're looking at these name brand companies. Disney has just kept, look at this stair stepping down. Um, this is low. Like I bought some Disney around the 130 level, nibbled on a little bit more around 120, but it's kept dropping. So I'm holding off for now. I know Disney's going to re rebound in the long run, but for now the market doesn't like it so much. And I've, I've decided to kind of hold off now on buying some Disney, but in the long run, let's look at the monthly long run goes up over time. Um, the COVID low was right around $80 a share. Right here was the COVID low in March of 2020. And it went all the way up to 200 and has now fallen all the way back down. It's lost 50% of its value in the last year or so. That's a big move for a company like Disney. So, you know, I've nibbled a little bit uh, waiting for the move back up. I'll have to bide my time here. Nike. Another stalwart, another huge name brand, just moving down. You know, at some point, value will come into play and, and the stocks will have to go up. Because these are companies, these are not companies that are going bankrupt. These are not companies that sell horrible items, horrible products. These are companies that have been around a long, long time that make quality products. And eventually, the value of that company brand will be decided that it's gotten too cheap. It has to go back up. So if you have dry powder, and I tell this to my newsletter readers, if you have dry powder, which means you have some cash, some disposable cash that you can put or allocate into the market, find some of your favorite stocks, stocks you've been watching, and nibble a little bit you know that eventually these stocks are going to go up because these are not companies that are going out of business. They sell products that people buy and then quarter after quarter, they have profits that are increasing. If you have a company that's increasing products quarter after quarter, the stock is eventually going to go back up. These stocks are just getting hit along with everything else in the market. So you have to understand where value is and what companies are worth buying and holding. Sure, you have to sit through some pain. That's how the market works. We're not always gonna be in an up market. Sometimes markets go down and you have to hold through. Or if you can't hold through, then you have to lighten up on your positions. It all depends on your personal situation. I can't tell you individually what to do, but I can tell you what I've been doing and I've been buying, nibbling on the way down, waiting for the turnaround. Okay, so let's take a look Let's see our list here. All right, so let's look at Amazon, Netflix. Amazon, we know they, they split their shares. Um, came down, may have hit 
you know, potential triple bottom action here. Let's draw the line right here. Okay, so we got some support here right around just above the 100 level for Amazon. One, two, tr possible triple bottom here. You got a little bit of a rounding bottom. So maybe Amazon's hit the bottom. Um, this seems to be a line of support right here. Uh, but it still has a decent way to go to get back up to its all-time highs. Um, but, you know, pay attention to the 100 level on Amazon. Uh, what else? Netflix we want to take a look at. I mean, Netflix had you know has just a horrible looking chart too since last November huge gap here from earnings huge gap here from earnings and now it seems to be possibly finding its bottom here right above the 150 level so we can kind of draw a line here support line you know just drawing these lines helps you have a visual of where some support is where some resistance is um, Netflix is kind of chugging along at the bottom here has the the 50 day moving average lurking above right around the 200 level so keep an eye on that if it can break that then it's got some clear selling but these last the last two earnings announcements have been pretty bad you can see these huge gaps so these gaps have not been filled yet long way to go to fill these gaps for netflix um, but it seems to be maybe right around 155 160 it's fi finding a potential bottom uh, what else we have? Uh, Procter & Gamble had a, had a nice V bounce. Let's see what else. We got some of the, the, the healthcare stocks had good, a good week bounced up Pfizer, Merck, and Eli Lilly, BMY. We had a position in the XLV, which is the healthcare ETF. We had to get out because of dropped pretty hard and knocked us out of, out of our position, unfortunately, and now has bounced back. Murphy's Law, I mean, it just happened. As soon as you get out, it reverses back in the direction that you want it to go. Sometimes it happens. Happens to the best of us, even. It's unfortunate. Um, it snapped back really good, too, really hard. A little upset about that, but sometimes that's just what the market does. Um, but I do still like the XLV healthcare is here to stay investing in some of these bigger pharma companies, Merck, Johnson & Johnson, Pfizer, Bristol-Myers. Um, they're, they're here to stay. Uh, the XLV, you can get all of them in one shot. Let's see what else. Uh, Costco, pretty volatile, big moves down, little bounce. Um, let's look at oh, PayPal. PayPal and Square, we, I always talk about the, the online payment companies. PayPal, just, just, this has been rough. This has been rough. Is it finding a bottom here yet? Eh, around $70 a share, maybe the bottom, but it, it's got a lot to make up for. It's got the 50-day moving average lurking right here. Um, I'm surprised at how hard PayPal and Square have gotten hit. Here's Square um, just, you know, just getting crushed. Went below $60 a share uh, last week. So... Um, some of these stocks just get hit really hard. Um, where have they found value? Have they found a bottom yet? Hard to say. I do like PayPal though. Um, you know, we've had position, we were able to get out and, um, but it's gotten really cheap, really cheap. I really don't have a, uh, a thought on this right now. I, I mean, in the long run, I like the online payment space, but th this, They've just been getting hit a little bit too hard for my liking. Um, let's see, McDonald's still hanging around, Pepsi. Oh, let's look at Coca-Cola. I'm a big fan of Coca-Cola. Uh, I like it as a company itself. I don't really drink the product because I don't I don't drink sodas or pop or whatever you want to call them. Um, but the company itself is great. Great, great dividend, dividend achiever. Um, just a stalwart, just goes up over time. It's a slow mover, but the dividend helps, and it's a boring 
slow moving stock, but you you really can't go wrong. Uh, it, it bounced right here on its 200 day moving average. Here's the line. So right in between, you know, fifth, right under $60, it bounced pretty good right off the 200 day moving average and has bounced back good, bounced back about four or $5 a share. And here's where it closed yesterday, right around $63. So Coke, good, good one there. If you'd gotten in, um, what else we have? Let's see. <clears throat> Here's Warren Buffett stock. Berkshire got hit pretty hard. Uh, has it found a bottom? Tag the 20 level on the RSI. Let's see if this is a good a good point to get in. For those of you interested on my website, I have the, the Warren Buffett report that I wrote about an option trading strategy where you can piggyback him for real cheap. You can go on our website and take a look for that report. Um, got hit pretty hard. So is, is Berkshire finding some value here? Uh, you, you know, Warren Buffett, he's, uh, over the years, he's done quite well, worth $200 billion or so. So, you, you, you know, following him cannot be such a bad thing. And when his fund gets hit, you know, open your eyes a little bit. It may be worth nibbling on some shares down here if you like Warren Buffett. Uh, let's see what else we have. And then we're going to wrap this up. Twitter, still hanging around, still undecided what's happening with Twitter. Is the deal going to go through Elon Musk buying Twitter? Don't know. Just don't know yet. Um, here, this is Facebook, but let's put the new symbol in. Meta. There we go. Um, hanging around the lows. Was that 380? And now it got down to 160, finished yesterday at 170. Meta, I don't have much thoughts. I, I was never really a big Facebook fan as far as the stock goes, but it, it really hasn't done that great over the last few months. IBM, yeah, IBM's doing okay. Google, hanging around, got hit somewhat, but, but had a good day yesterday, up $114 a share. GameStop. AMC. I don't really track these too much, because, but I just keep them in here. Chewy is a little interesting to me. I think Chewy may have found a bottom here. Got this nice rounded bottom and is now popped back above the line with, that we had drawn in the past. So it got above, let's see, this is probably, like, you know, 37 36 $37 was He's tagged it once, twice, three times. Finally got through it, but now it's popped back above it. So Chewy could be interesting uh, bullish-wise. Uh, next thing going to be gunning for the 200-day moving average right here, right around $50 a share. So I can see Chewy potentially, it's worked its way pretty good. So maybe it wants to shoot for the $50 level. So keep an eye on Chewy and see where that one goes. All right, I think that's about it for now. Nothing else really popping out to me. Clorox has had a nice rebound. Colgate has a pretty good rebound. These are these are the companies that, in good times and bad, you got Colgate, Procter and Gamble. I mean, these are products that they 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 make products that people need for their everyday needs. Some people will call them recession proof. You know, they get hit too, but they when they bounce, they bounce back pretty good. Here's Procter and Gamble, Colgate. You can see that. The, the just incredible bounce like it, it just it, it makes up all the down move it had in just a couple of days so anyway keep an eye on some of those stocks all right so that's it for the assessment let's look at the spy one more time see what's going to happen next week potentially so we had the nice v bounce here v bounce is when it makes a shape like a v comes down hard and then bounces hard so it looks like a v we're going to probably have some momentum following through on Monday since we finished so strong yesterday, Friday. But watch the 20-day moving average lurking up here. If it can get through that, then it's the 50-day moving average up here. All right, I want to see it go up. I'm a bull in the long run. All right, so let's go to our website real quick and show you what we do. We sell put options. We sell put option credit spreads. That's what we do. We have our two newsletters right here, our services tab, two newsletters, and we have our coaching services. If you need help, if you want to talk to, to me about how to learn to trade options, just 
get yourself to that next level, we have our one-on-one coaching. If you want a copy of our Put Selling Basics, this is a report, ebook that I wrote free that you can get for free on our website about what selling put options are, why it's such a great strategy, and why we love it. So go to our website, Put Selling Basics. Put your name and address in the box here. We send you an email. It has a downloadable link within that email for the report. All right. So that's it for me today. I hope this video has been helpful. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Send me an email. I always answer your emails. Can't give personal investment advice. So please try to refrain from from asking those kinds of questions. Anything options related, I can answer. All right. I hope everyone has a good weekend and a great trading week ahead. And I will see you here next Saturday. This is Lee Lowell signing off.